All right. So today is going to be um, our last video. Last video for the quarter. And uh, all we're going to do is go through two examples uh, about how to apply the chi-square test to genetic-specific problems. So yesterday we looked at in class what it, that test conceptually was. All right, so that you had a conceptual idea about why we were doing it and what it would tell us and things like that. Today, we are going to apply the chi-square test in two practice problems that will be an awfully lot like what you're going to do on your homework. All right, um, and we're going to just going to go through those and I'll explain it so then you have a reference to do uh, some work. So... First uh, is a question about linked genes. And remember, linked genes are two genes that are found on the same chromosome. And so they're the, mo the most likely to be inherited together. And the only time that they might be inherited separately is if crossing over happened to, to separate them. But that doesn't happen very often. So this is what a question might look like. It says, you're doing a genetics experiment with fruit flies. In the P generation, you cross two true breeding, remember homozygous, that's what that means, uh, flies. The female parent is brown and wingless, and the male parent is black with normal wings. All the flies in the F1 generation are brown and have normal wings. Indicate the alleles associated with dominant phenotypes by uppercase letters and recessive phenotypes with lowercase letters. Assume the genes are not found on a sex chromosome. So this isn't sex-linked. Indicate the color alleles as B and the wing alleles as N. What are the genotypes of the flies in the P generation? Okay. So if we're crossing two flies that are true breeding, and the female is brown and wingless, and the male parent is black with normal wings, that means they're both homozygous for both traits. One's homozygous dominant for both traits, and one is homozygous recessive for both traits. If all of the flies in the F1 generation... Oh, just a second, I need to... I need to make sure that this is working. There we go. Sorry, if all the flies in the F1 generation are brown and have normal wings, brown must be dominant to black, and normal wings must be dominant to non-normal wings. So, what are the genotypes of the parents? We must have one that has two big Bs. two big N's, and one that has two little B's and two little N's. And over on the side, we're going to make sure that we know that the capital letter B is brown, the lower case letter B is black, the capital N wings in the lowercase n, wing less. All right. Then it says, what are the genotypes of the flies in the F1 generation? Well, we don't really have to do a Punnett square. Hopefully, we can look and see that all of the F1 generation would be heterozygous for both traits. So as you take an F1 female and cross uh, her with a homozygous black wingless male. What is the male of that? What's the genotype of that male? So if it's homozygous black, two little b's, wingless, two little n's, right there. You get 1,600 offspring in the F2 generation of the following phenotypes. And then it says right here. 
And so I'm going to write in their genotypes just so we know. Brown winged flies, black winged flies, brown wingless flies, black wingless flies. All right. So if we have brown winged flies, we have one dominant B, something else, one dominant N, something else. All of those that fit this pattern are brown and winged. If they're black and winged, two recessive Bs, dominant N, something else. Brown and wingless, and black and wingless. All right. So then it says, are the color and wing genes linked? If so, what is the genetic distance between the two? Um, we won't look at this. We'll actually look at that in second, third quarter. What are are the the genes linked? So to start out, what we're going to do is make something called a null hypothesis. And this is a hypothesis that includes the word not. For all of our chi-square questions, our null hypothesis is going to be the same. And that is that there is no, there is not a difference between our observed and expected frequencies. That's going to be all, every single time, no matter what we use our chi-square test for, that's always going to be our hypothesis. There's not a difference between our observed and expected frequencies. If that's the case for this question, that means that they're not linked. So we have our observed numbers right here. Right here. Okay. We need to figure out what our expected would be for the F2 generation. Okay, so what we're going to do, how many fruit flies of each phenotype would we expect? And to do that, we need to make a Punnett square. We're going to make a Punnett square crossing these two, because these two genotypes are what gave rise to these F2 offspring. So, sorry. We have one double homozygous and one homozygous recessive for both traits. So for our Punnett square, we're going to cross one individual like this with one individual like this. So let's put this one on the top. Doing our foiling method. Writing down the gametes. This is why being able to do a dihybrid Punnett square is really important. And then for this one, notice how all the gametes are going to be the same. Sorry, that was a horrible B. So I can cross out these three rows because they're going to be a copy of my first one. This is just going to save us some time. So let's uh, fill this in. Just so that we have... A good idea. There we are. Okay. Four different genotypes just like that. Now we're going to take the proportion of each uh, phenotype and multiply it by the total number of offspring. So we get the total number of offspring of each phenotype we would expect. So we're going to see 
which of these genotypes end up being which of these phenotypes and what proportion they are of the total offspring. Well, let's look. This is a, bla a brown normal winged fly. This is a brown fly with no wings. This is a black fly with normal wings. This is a black fly with no wings. Here are each of the four phenotypes, and they each make up one-fourth of the total possibilities. So we would expect that 25% or 0.25 would be each phenotype. And so as far as number of individuals, 0.25 times 1,600, we would expect to get 400 flies of each phenotype. This is our expected. There we go. That is our expected. If we look at the expected and the actual, those look very different. They are very different. So we can already tell that there is a, is a big difference between our observed and expected. We can already tell that our null hypothesis that there is not a difference is probably incorrect and that these genes are probably linked. But let's continue with our test to double check. So now we are going to compare our observed and expected numbers in doing the, a chi-square test. And it will tell us if our observed and expected values are actually significantly different or if the difference just arises by chance. If they are significantly different, then we have to reject our hypotenuse hypothesis, meaning that there is a difference between observed and expected, and the genes are probably linked together. So let's write the different phenotypes here. Brown, wings, brown, no wings, black, wings, black, no wings. All right, now the observed. Brown wings was 85, and brown with no wings was 712. 85, 712. Black with wings was 728 and black with no wings was 74. 728, 74. So in total, it's going to be 1600. Expected, we would expect 400 of each. Actually, if I'm looking here, these add up to 1599. Let me just add one here. It's not going to make that much of a difference. All right. Now we're going to fill out this table. And I would suggest when you start out, making a table like this to compute the chi-square number to keep everything in order. So we're just going to do observed minus expected first, 85 minus 400, negative 3, 15, 712 minus 400, 312, 72, Minus 400, negative 328. Wait, 
that's not right. Black with wings. How many did we have for observed? Seven twenty-eight. Seven twenty-eight. So this isn't twenty-eight here. Seven twenty-eight minus four hundred. Seven twenty-eight minus four hundred. That's three twenty-eight. And seventy-four minus four hundred. Negative 326. All right. Now we're going to take each of those numbers and square it. So we're going to get for our first one 99225. For a second one, we get 97344. For our third one, we get 107584. And for our fourth one, we get 106276. And then finally, we'll, we'll divide each of those numbers by expected. Okay, so 99. 225 divided by 400. Two four eight point zero six, And so I'm just rounding to two decimal places. Um, in your calculations, I would always use two decimal places to round. Uh, 97544 divided by 400. Two four three point eight six one zero seven five eight four divided by four hundred uh two six eight point nine six one zero six two seven six divided by four hundred two six five Six nine, and so lastly, so we've done this observed minus expected squared over expected. Now we have to do the sum. We're gonna add them all up. Add this column all up. All right, so we're just going to do that quickly. Do six eight point nine six. 243.86, 248.06. And we're going to get our chi square number. That's what this is 1026.57. This is our chi square number. Now that we have this chi square number, and let me copy it down here. So our chi-square is equal to 1026.57. We need to compare it to our chi-square number to see what it actually means. Along the sides on our chi-square table, there are, or on the top rather, degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom for most genetic problems will be the number of possible phenotypes in our cross minus 1. So for this example, there were four possible outcomes. The flies could be one of these possible phenotypes. Minus one is three. So we have three degrees of freedom. So we're only going to look at the three degrees of freedom column with our number, 1026.57. Here is a copy of it exactly from your uh, formula sheet. So we're going to look at this column right here. And any time that you do yours, we're only going to look at the first number in that column. All right. 
the this is called the critical value and um, we're going to see whether the number that our chi-square number is bigger than this or smaller than this so if our chi-square number is bigger than this we are going to um, accept our null hypothesis we're going to say that there is a significant difference between observed and expected and therefore uh, in our case the genes aren't aren't linked to leather if the number is smaller than that we will say that we are rejecting our null hypothesis or that we are accepting the null hypothesis and there is no significant difference between our observed and our expected so our number is way 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 bigger than this it's in the thousands so we would say that we are rejecting the null hypothesis there is a significant difference and for our experiment that means that the genes are not linked okay oh wait sorry the genes are linked I'm sorry because if they were not linked we would expect to have gotten what we predicted in the Punnett square because Punnett squares are based on what uh, what we would expect if they were not linked but we didn't get that and so now we are expecting that the genes are linked okay so this I will put uh, a copy of this that all this math this work uh, for this video on the canvas module for today for you to double check but this is how we would apply it for a genetics example.